Hey guys, welcome to me reacting to Cloud Gaming Scott the Waz by Scott the Waz. Now, I have not seen this, but I know what cloud gaming is. It's basically the idea that you don't need a console to play a game. You can kind of just download a game, I think on like a TV or like a tablet or something like that and play it. Basically the idea of Google Stadia where you don't really need a console, all you need is kind of like a web browser type thing. I don't really know. Honestly, didn't really do well, and that just makes sense. Google Stadia was laggy, it was very broken, glitchy. It, it didn't work when it came out. It, it was not great. It was not a good start, and I really don't know anyone who owns a Google Stadia, or have even heard if anyone still uses Google Stadia. I, I really haven't heard anything about Google Stadia in like years. But yeah, anyways, guys, we're doing some description. Make sure to Scott the Waz and some description notes. Let's get right into it. Hello, I come from a time in which the term Hey All Scott here is banned. Cloud gaming has taken over. Millions what? Are better off because of it. Companies are less wasteful with their products. But okay. I'm a box with Mario on it, damn it. So we have to stop this. Modern gaming. Something stinks. The cool thing to do with the is 40. Isn't this so True. much better? Kind Everybody of. misses the good yeah. old days. Just ask Nixon. Man, remember when things were worse? I miss that. You just always look at things from your youth with more affection <laughs> seriously for anybody saying that's a good that line new game is worse than this old game from back in the day because it lacks the magic that one had is that because you played that game as a kid and you always have better memories of it so no matter what this newer one does it'll never be better in your eyes or is it actually because that new thing is of lower quality in some cases yes but no matter where the video game industry goes <laughs> yeah. in the future it's hard for people to evolve their taste and accept that this is just how things are now when the xbox one was initially revealed in 2013 to require an internet connection to function properly guess who was pissed i can't recall a single person really microsoft here the idea your video game console needed to have an internet connection for single player games was preposterous now it's a footnote what people were once enraged yeah, about true. With video games have slowly evolved into something you just come to expect I, mean, I actually had no idea. Online multiplayer was a scam. Downloadable content? No! And now some of Nintendo's games completely depend on online multiplayer. Yeah, DLC. true. Companies change, and that's fine. New yeah. Is scary. The thing is about Nintendo Online, though, is that it's not... Still not great. They're, they're trying. They're trying to get into it. And, and you can tell they're definitely trying now more than ever. Because they're seeing the backlash they've been getting, I feel like, for their online service. So they're trying to make it a little bit better, but it's still not great. It definitely needs more kinks, I feel like. When they do come with legitimate downsides, it's hard to move on. What's next on the chopping block for video games? Well, corporations hate physical media. They want us all to move to digital, trying to make physical as less appealing as possible. I think they've been spitting in my games. They control <laughs> everything with the digital copy of the game, and you can't easily return or trade that in. You don't have to produce and ship the games. It's everything they've ever wanted in a 400 gigabyte file. Yikes. I mean, my god, they've been releasing digital-only consoles with no means of playing discs, and they only have this much storage? Games take up so oh, much yeah. space and such powerful hardware that's so expensive and requires a TV. You don't have that with movies. At this point, you just need a TV. So what if I could play a game like a movie on Netflix or play a song on Spotify? I don't download it. I stream it through the internet. It's the perfect True. idea. Oh, yeah. Now I'd like to introduce the future of gaming. Game streaming yeah. is an obvious step to take. I mean, it's cloud cool. gaming, yeah. It's Google Stadia lag, all that, really, yeah. Mario's next. I'm not opposed to the future. I'm just scared shitless about it. Gaming isn't like other mediums. It's honestly the most unique, so you can't really take what's happening with movies and music and apply it to video games. It may make sense on paper, but it's way more complicated than that. Yeah. You can ask a dog to fit into a Well, yeah, because, like, the thing is with movies and music is that music and movies you don't have to play well you do but what i mean is like video games are interactable movies and shows and music is only really interactable in the sense that you press play or pause or rewind and that's really it but it's still just the same thing like what i mean is that a video game is interactable you know there's a ton of settings and everything changes in like a 3d space as you move i guess whereas like a movie it's basically just playing a recording when you think about it and then same thing with music you're just playing a recording just without the visual part so that's really that that's mainly why it's easy to stream like m music movies and 
shows like that because it's already just recorded and packed into the website. It's easy. But like video games, it's it's not that easy. You you have to like interact with it. You have to play it. You have to move around in like this fictional setting. It it's a lot. Yeah. A cage too small for it, or ask a cat to be perfectly streamable online without any latency or lag. What? So what is game streaming? Oh yeah, Luna. Come to the right place. <laughs> so you play a video game on your PlayStation 2. That entire game is included on the disc you bought and was built to run on the console's hardware. Makes sense. This is what the guy at Best Buy said. The problem is, as the years go by, the hardware ages more and more. There's more impressive technology being pumped out. And while new games come out for these old systems and they look better than last year's games, that's because the developers were learning how to use the hardware more effectively. But eventually, you just have to upgrade things. You can't keep milking the same five-year-old hardware, which is why we got the PlayStation 3 and the cycle continues. These are all computers at the end of the day. If you pry them open, you'll find, uh, specs. With game streaming, theoretically, you don't have to worry about buying any of this beefy, expensive hardware. All you need is an internet-capable device. Playing these massive, beautiful games requires tons of horsepower they can't just run on anything they need to run on some kind of supercomputer yeah streams from more powerful hardware to you over the internet all this means you could technically get better graphics than on a console via this method you don't have to buy the expensive technology it's already all bought and being nursed by the company that's streaming it to you and they can continue to upgrade and fix things as time goes on you don't need to worry about installations downloads patches these big ass consoles taking up space it's bringing gaming back to the idea that all you have to do is grab a controller and hit play and the game just starts. It's very much like comparing watching a movie on Netflix to playing it on a DVD. Eventually you have to upgrade to that Blu-ray player. With Netflix, you just <laughs> find something you want, hit play, and it loads up through the internet, transmitting the video frame by frame. You don't have to wait to download the movie, thus having to free space on but your But the iPad. thing is, is that this mm, is pure convenience. Games don't go off of like And it's so bad. Yeah. Game streaming or cloud gaming makes me sick. And if it doesn't make you sick, you're already sick. In reality, it's enticing. Your sadist. And that sadism started in 2010. See, game streaming has been in the works for years, but it officially became a full retail product in 2010 with OnLive, a cloud gaming service hell bent on going bankrupt two years later. Let's test out OnLive. You know, maybe I'm wow. giving cloud gaming a hard time. Maybe it can win me over. With silence. OnLive was yeah. the first big cloud gaming platform. The technology was a thing before. The company G Cluster debuted a game streaming technology at E3. 2000? What the hell did that look like? It's through the net. But OnLive was the first major mainstream one. <laughs> yeah, what? Bucks a month, you what did that look like? He's right. Games. Yeah, to use the cloud gaming service, you had to pay a fee per Lego month. Lego Batman? You buy the games you wanted to play at full price separately. They quickly removed this fee because when you go bankrupt two years later, you gotta act fast. OnLive was available on computers, smart devices, and the OnLive micro console, which I have here. God, it's so tiny, but it has some heft to it. Don't swallow. The official OnLive controller is honestly one of the nicer controllers I've ever used, and I tried out OnLive back in the day. I played Saints Row the Third on my white 2010 MacBook. This is it now. So, massive props for being the first major cloud gaming okay. platform. Like, for 2010, it worked pretty good. It also wasn't very good, but it was 2010, so it was pretty good. They had lots of big games on here. The Batman Arkham series, L.A. Noir, Just Cause 2, Bioshock, Assassin's Creed. This wasn't just some oops, I sh my pants at GDC and announced on live thing. This was a legitimate service, and from my experience using an underpowered computer on a Wi-Fi connection, it was fairly impressive. Yeah, you still needed some horsepower to your devices if you wanted the best experience. If you were running this on a smartphone at the time, prepare for... The OnLive app oh, was available God. on mobile, but really only Android. The iPhone and iPad had an OnLive viewer app, which let you browse games and watch others playing games on OnLive, but you couldn't play the games on the device. It's the exact reason why I'm an Apple bitch today. Uh, I don't want to be overwhelmed with options. I would say OnLive was ahead <laughs> of its time. For the era in which it was released, I stand by it working quite well and having more than enough support behind it. In fact, I think it was comparable to, and in some cases, better than cloud gaming services we see today. But all employees at the company were laid off in 2012, and while the service remained operational, by 2015, it ended with Sony acquiring most of OnLive's assets. You know, Sony also acquired the cloud gaming company Gaikai. They offered demos of full console games streamed via web browsers. And after Sony bought them up in 2012, I think it's fair to expect they had something cooking. I'm pleased to announce the new streaming game service, PlayStation Now. Oh god, it talks. PlayStation Now. Oh uh, yeah. Now. Sony's answer to manslaughter. You know, PlayStation Now has been a thing ever since January 2014, and I think after I tried it out here, it finally reached a record one user. When the service initially launched, <laughs> record it one user. 15 to 20 bones a month based on your subscription plan, and on top of that, you still had to pay for the games, and they were all just rentals. Oh, I'm not paying enough to be f***ed. 
PlayStation Now was sort of Sony's way of getting around the lack of PlayStation 3 compatibility with the PlayStation 4, as PS3 games were and still are the main titles offered on the service. PlayStation Now was also available were for and still are? Like the PlayStation Vita and PlayStation 3, so I believe that's enough Kay. for to be considered famine. Finally, I can play PS3 games on my PS3 for only $2! For four hours of playtime! Yes, PlayStation Now was game streaming, but launched with a rental model. The pricing varied amongst games. Some offered the two for four hour deal. This is the best we can do. Okay, time is money. Of course, you could opt for the six for seven day option. I needed some good math today. Eight for 30 days or 15 for 90 days. For Uncharted 2, it would be cheaper to buy seven copies of the disc. But that pricing wasn't even a standard. Some games were even more expensive, effectively doubling the usual prices. Why wasn't there an option to just buy the game? Why do this whole rental nonsense? Why was it so expensive? It was cheaper with OnLive. If anything, it would have made more sense if the small startup companies' prices were more expensive and the big conglomerate could cut a deal. What's the premium being yeah, paid true. for here? Like, what happens when I stream a game? PlayStation Now was initially what? a huge bust, but as the years went on, it took on a new life as a better service. For only $60 a year, you get access to all games on the service, no rentals, no need to purchase the games individually, one fee, you get everything. The service still focuses on PlayStation 3 games, but there are a few PS2 and PS4 games available. With these, you can actually download to your system and play without streaming. It's a really great way to play games you're ashamed to outright purchase. I mean, half of the problem <laughs> with playing Sonic Forces is owning it. But all <laughs> games true. are available to stream. The PS3 games are only available to stream, so let's give that a try. Three years later. Okay, pretty good. So here's the thing. My internet connection is okay. I think I'm officially the only person to not say it's either really good or really bad. It's like when the 3DS XL came out, every single review had to brag about how big their hands were. This system is so much better because I have really big hands. F*** me. But PlayStation what? Now streaming works it's not perfect if you're actively looking for problems you'll find them looking at the picture quality you'll notice it's not as good as playing the game off the actual system frame drops glitches they happen but a lot of the time i sort of forget i'm streaming the game you just get kind of sucked in and play the game because that's what you're doing you're playing a video game of course streaming introduces lag you're receiving an internet signal and then your controller has to send a command back to the console through bluetooth then through the internet and then the internet has to respond to your oh yeah in the game and that's i forgot about the that button. there's gonna be some lag but with most of the game I forgot about game, input. You don't yeah. need pinpoint precision. Most. I'm a Pac-Man Championship Edition 2 nut. I know what I'm talking about here. This is an incredibly fast-paced game that needs split-second reactions, and when it gets towards the end of a run, I found it painfully difficult to make turns while streaming. Oh, well, that's PlayStation now. It can't play Pac-Man. Nobody else with technology from 1840 can. I think what? the biggest issue with PlayStation now, though, is that it's still pretty clunky. Now is described as games on demand. Eight times speed. Give demand a second. It's not that bad, but Give PS4 demand games a second. take a while to load. Playing a game boots you out of the PS Now app, and it appears on your home screen like you bought it. In fact, for every single game I played, I get an email thanking me for my purchase. It thinks I purchased all of these games. They always say zero dollars. Sony, give it up. I'm not replying. The game selection is quite good. Though. What? It's so many of the PS3's best, and games from the PS4 that come in and out of being available. The service has definitely improved over time, but man, when streaming they gotta fix to that. I feel games, like PlayStation Now has too many quirks for it to be a legitimate part of the conversation it doesn't work well for all types of games it takes a while to load and then when you're in the game itself the quality is unpredictable it depends on how your internet's feeling that day the only reason why you'd prefer streaming compared to just downloading is to play these games on pc where playstation now is also available playing ps3 games which i'll just throw it out there if you want to play a lot of ps3 games i might have found the perfect device or if you want to save hard drive space playing ps4 games why waste 40 gigabytes downloading neo when you can stream it because streaming's for bitches, all right? If you own any console from the past decade, you're pretty used to the idea of deleting files to make room for new games at this point. It doesn't matter anymore. It's saving space? Yeah, that's a Yo, feature with game consoles now. Well, at least we have NVIDIA GeForce Now. Finally, a cloud gaming service with... Oh, yeah, NVIDIA. My mom asked me how its latency was on this. This is an NVIDIA Shield TV. It's a tiny box you buy to watch Netflix. Now, why would you buy this tiny box compared to this tiny box? If you're one of those that refuse to buy anything with less than 3 gigs of RAM. No. Pretty solid user experience on this thing. I mean, its main purpose is to be used for Netflix and Hulu. But if you want to play games, there are some mobile games adapted for use with... Jackbox? Games. There's GeForce Now. Crossy games. Road? Oh, my God. Look at all these things. These are... Some huge names. You know what? I'm gonna try No Man's Sky, but first I oh, have no to Man's Sky. GeForce Now and create an account. All right, so I create an account off screen and log in here. Okay, I need a gamepad, and Nvidia is fucking terrified of my internet connection, and I also have to perform a system update. No worries, no worries. Let's do that and try connecting an Xbox controller to the Shield TV for 35 minutes. Boom, found it. Can control the entire 
Shield TV with an Xbox controller. This is the happiest I've been in 35 minutes. Hey, let's try something like Fortnite. That game being streamable is a match made in heaven. It's incredibly popular, and having it streamed and playable on any device, well, that's a no-brainer. Oh, here we go. It's just gonna load. Let's try again. <sighs> yeah, let's try let's again. Try harder. Okay, I might have been logged out after updating. Let me log back into my GeForce Now account. Back to the game selection. You know what? Rocket League. That's a fun game. I have my gamepad. I'm logged in. Let's do it. Okay, so all these games aren't available on GeForce Now like PlayStation Now. GeForce is allowing me to play my Steam library or Epic Games library or whatever on my Shield TV or other devices using cloud technology. So these are basically games on Steam that support GeForce Now. So you log into GeForce Yo, Now Terraria. Steam account, and you can then stream games that you want on Steam that support GeForce Now. Okay, well for Rocket League, it looks like I need an Epic Games account. Thankfully, I can sign up via the Shield TV using my Xbox controller to control the mouse. I sign up for the account and get a verification code in my inbox. I try to enter it. The screen is frozen, so I try to sign up for an Epic Games account on my laptop. Add Rocket League to my library on my laptop, then sign into the account on the Shield. Oh TV my god, there's just so much. Yeah. And that's GeForce Now. Uh, keep in mind, I use Apple products, so I'm a f***ing idiot. Streaming is supposed to be easier than not. Yo, Uno, so let's go. Seven different accounts to do any of this. And Yo, keep in Uno. Mind, it's not just Steam and Epic Games styles. I mean, we have Origin, Uplay. I mean, I'll do anything Uplay does. But still, basically, GeForce Now is to play PC games via the cloud. They're not GeForce Now games. They're PC games using GeForce Now technology to be streamed. The point of having games like Fortnite or Rocket League on a streaming service is so then these free-to-play games are immediately accessible, which is what the developers want. They're free after all especially with this service being true the top box like people buying these types of products probably don't have a playstation or xbox so why would you buy this to stream netflix if you already have those so for people like them who aren't super hardcore why the hell would they do all of this if they wanted to play rocket league just buy a damn xbox it's the same price this is definitely more for a pc gamer somebody who would like to play some of their library on a tv or a mobile device if they so please oh my god for me yeah this true is not worth the headache and i did a lot of research on this well here's hoping google stadia here we go so google doesn't know anything yeah. about video games google, google stadia they yeah do have some of the most advanced internet based technologies or this was in general out there if anybody can make cloud gaming viable it's them premiere edition what this includes the only two things you can use what's an addition of google stadia about this what could they possibly add or remove from this package to make it a different edition without the controller it's just a google chromecast without the chromecast it's just the controller the google stadia <laughs> controller see there's almost never anything unique about controllers made by companies outside oh so every single time he says google stadia he freaking like gags okay that's it's actually funny all right i'll give him that that's actually a good joke that's a good joke Ones. Look, let's take the Xbox and PlayStation controllers and mash them together. Whenever you see a company do this, be afraid. It's a fine controller, it's just, who gives a shit? A Google Chromecast Ultra is included, which is how we're playing this on a TV. You just have to plug it in here and watch it dangle. Setting up Stadia is pretty simple, and we're into the action pretty soon. We're pretty tethered to a smartphone app, though. You can't browse the games on the store on the TV. We have to use the smartphone to look through games and add to our library. Oh man, it's just so much simpler this way. So yeah. streaming the games, it works. Play well yeah, I guess. Everything loads up quick enough, and while I'm in the game, things work pretty well. It's not always going to be flawless, but I do truly forget what I'm playing is through the internet, and it just feels like an actual game console. Hey, I played the Switch enough to not care about resolution as much as others, and the second Nomad, so I don't really care <laughs> if it goes down to 1079p. What I do care about are the games playable. One thing I've noticed, if you want to get into cloud gaming, you better love Assassin's Creed. If you want to play Ubisoft games and very little else, sure. The selection just isn't varied enough. You did get a couple of big new releases, but it's never been enough to make Stadia your go-to platform. It can't be. There's barely any exclusives, and the ones they have, Pac-Man Mega Tunnel Battle? This kind of stuff gets me off and I don't care. You can sign up for a pro subscription. The basic service doesn't usually cost money, you just have to pay for the games. A pro subscription for $9.99 a month gets you the best quality streaming possible, exclusive discounts, and free games available, of which there's a decent enough selection to warrant jumping in on pro. So here's the Terraria? thing about Terraria? Okay. I'm out of fluids. I think people give it a hard time because- <laughs> I'm out of fluids, it's okay, that's funny. It's not a bad product. It's just a horrible service. They gave up on it just about a year into its inception. The game lineup is pitiful and it's pretty much the same as every other cloud gaming platform. Oh look, Assassin's Creed and Tomb Raider. Yeah. We get it. Like, put other games on here, classic games, modern games, just something other than what Ubisoft is doing. Most of these are games from a couple of years ago and they just aren't exciting. But like if those games release on the Nintendo Switch or something, there's a reason why people want to play it there because it'll be a new experience playing portably. It's just not the same on Stadia. True, you know, that's actually true 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 that's actually true yeah
because with Nintendo Switch, you can play the games on the go. Yeah, that that is true. That's actually true. Where is this? Not really. You can play it portably. You just need a specific type of phone with a great internet connection and a controller, preferably. Look at these two people. They're playing console games portably. Which one would you trust with your life? When you have to jump through so many hoops to do such a thing, the magic is lost. And Google has shown True. they don't understand video games. They may think they do, but at the end of the day, the tech industry and video game industry are much more different than these companies think. So bring in Amazon. They're just as bad as Google. Oh, yeah, the Luna. And nobody to love. Amazon Luna is their cloud gaming service. Remember when they were trying to break into gaming with their Fire? TV set top box and they made this whole ass controller for it. The only things available were mobile games blown up for the TV, so I think they know what they're doing here. You know, the selection here is quite a lot better than Google Stadia. So having more than Assassin's Creed will do that to you. There's tons of variety. Having so more than all, Assassin's Creed. On par with Google's. Now, that variety comes at a cost. I think Amazon said, we need a baseball game. MLB The Show isn't returning our calls? Uh, uh, sure! But uh, just the fact that for $5.99 a month compared to Stadia Pro's $9.99 a month, I get the best quality streaming and way more games for free. Shantae. You can play all these instantly. No purchase. No adding them to your library with a smartphone. This is way more in line with what you think of when Netflix for games comes up. Except Netflix doesn't have a separate subscription for Ubisoft's games. I mean, this still isn't amazing, what? but I prefer what I'm seeing here to Google. But if you want an all-in-one experience, Xbox Cloud Gaming. Microsoft's chipped away at perfecting cloud gaming for years, and to have them- I saw Five Nights at Freddy's. ...games via their own IPs and Xbox Game Pass, this is insanely impressive. And that's what a lot of these cloud gaming operations are. Oh, okay. Impressive, but they just get enough wrong to make them f***ing putrid. So here's the thing. Game streaming makes sense, and I think it's ridiculous to act like buying a game and immediately being able to play without a download isn't convenient and neat. But there's always so many things that just rub me the wrong way about this kind of stuff. First and foremost, it's longevity. I mean, look at OnLive. That thing is gone as f***. With not being able to download these True. games, just having a physical option, True. when these services are down, they're down. And they're they down, them, yeah. They're gone forever. And not being able to Yo, Uno. Download, oh my god, guys. Uno. But if downloading is really that big of an issue for you and your download speeds are that bad, how do you have internet fast enough for game streaming? And the games are just never there. All of these services go after run-of-the-mill Ubisoft games, and, like, True. I don't care! The benefits that come with cloud gaming often are outweighed by the negatives. It's unreliable. The game selection's not there, and if you think it doesn't feel like you own digital games, try streamed games. I feel like I'm at a demo kiosk playing these things. And I just feel like video games don't lend themselves as much to the streaming subscription model as much as movies and music do. With those, well, yeah. you your experiences. You just want instant access to whatever, whenever. You're randomly like, let's watch a movie, or look up this song. Games are a huge True. commitment. They can be hundreds of hours long you aren't really gonna yeah true you're usually gonna i didn't think about that either the time and, play, and that's your game for the weekend so why does it matter that you can pull these games up fast like youtube videos uh, playing on your phone thing it's just too clunky for me no to yeah that, that is stupid take it seriously like you need to have a blazing fast internet connection on the go and then preferably a controller and a phone mount and at that point just get a portable game. Yeah, just get a just switch. Just yeah. This around with your phone that much less convenient than lugging this around. Cloud gaming has taken the form of a bunch of tech companies that like to act like they know what they're doing with video games, pumping loads of money into this thing they'll abandon within five years. I'm open to an all digital future. I mean, I prefer how things are now with physical games, but I'm not going to resist it. I've accepted that this is how the future is looking. And cloud gaming has a ton of potential as a supplement to regular gaming because i will be damned if my next game console is a skin tag yeah this was a good video this is a good video i enjoyed it i think it was very very good i think this video was enjoyable it was entertaining just going through all the cloud gaming consoles and basically just discussing his thoughts on them and then inevitably at the end telling the audience the reason why that a majority of these cloud gaming, I guess, consoles aren't really that great using using the evidence shown from, you know, what he showed, basically. I don't think I, I worded that correctly at all, but I, I'm going to go with that. But yeah, honestly, this video was good. It was enjoyable. The, enter uh, the editing was good. The jokes were funny. I liked it, especially the freaking gag joke. I think that was good. 
I think that was clever, especially when he said, I, I, I ran out of food. Uh, but yeah, anyways, guys, if you enjoyed the fucking video, subscribe to my channel. See you next one. Bye.